similar to functions of one variable, we can define the inverse of some mappings, in this case transformations. Consider the following definition. Linear transformation T from Rn to Rn is called invertible It's called invertible if the equation g of x equals y has a unique solution x for each y. So basically it says just the same as 1, 1 uh, uh, functions, real functions, that when we start off with a vector x and we map it onto a vector y, that we can find it back implicitly. And this vector is denoted t minus 1 y, or the inverse of y. And t minus 1 is called the inverse transformation of T. But we may show that when T is an invertible linear transformation, then T inverse is also a linear transformation. Well, to see this, take arbitrary vectors v and v w in Rn and let the vector x be the inverse of v, so it is g minus 1 v, and y is the inverse of the vector w. Well, now we have the following. That the inverse of v plus w equals the inverse of tx, yeah, since x is t inverse of v, we know that v is t of x, and similarly w is t of y. Now we use the fact that t is a linear transformation, so actually t of x plus t of y equals t of x plus y, right? Now we have t and the inverse t minus 1, and this amounts to the identity, so we get x, the vector x plus y. And x we write t minus 1 v, and y we write t minus 1 w. So actually we have the first property of a linear transformation. Now we have to prove the second one, that the inverse of a scalar k times a vector v equals k times t inverse v. Well, we're going to do it in the same fashion. So we still know that v equals t times the transform vector x. And now we use the property here, again a linear uh, uh, transformation t. So k times tx equals t times kx. And now again we have t inverse times t, which equals k of x, the identity k of x is k times t inverse x minus 1. So now we have the first two properties, the essential properties for a linear transformation. So t inverse is a linear transformation.
as a corollary to the theorem that the inverse of uh, linear transformation t is also a linear transformation, we get the following. So t is a linear transformation, so we may write it as a matrix vector product. And also t inverse is can be written as a matrix vector product, since it's a linear transformation as well. Well, then we have that the two matrices, we can form the products, the dimensions are okay anyways, so we can look at a, b, and b times a, and they lead to the identity matrix. Well, the proof goes as follows. Take a vector x, then x is no more than t inverse of tx. which is no more than b times tx. Yeah, we use the fact that t inverse is a matrix vector product, and we know that t of x is a times x. Well, similarly, we get that y is no more than t of t inverse y, and t is a times x, so we get here a times t inverse y, and t inverse y equals b times y. So we, now we have two things, x and y, well, which equal identity matrix times x and identity matrix times y, equals b a times x and a b times y. So a b equals b a equals i n. So now the question is why is this true? If this holds, if b a equals identity matrix for all vectors, yeah, b a times x equals i n times x for all vectors x, and we also have that a, b times y equals identity matrix times y for all vectors y. Why should it hold that a, b is b, a equals the identity matrix 